Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Wilkins, an astronomer here at the University of Sussex. Over its more than 30 years of operation, the Hubble Space Telescope has transformed many years of astronomy, from observing a comet colliding with Jupiter, detecting water in the atmosphere of an alien planet, to changing what we believe the universe contains. However, one of the biggest impacts Hubble has had on it is on our understanding of the distant universe, the stars, galaxies, and black holes beyond our local corner of the cosmos. This is made possible due to the finite speed of light. As we look out into the universe, we see it as it was in the past. For example, we see the sun as it was roughly eight minutes ago. Even with nearby galaxies, we're seeing them as they were millions of years ago. For example, this image of the galaxy Centaurus A is how it would have appeared around 15 million years ago. Astronomers make use of this phenomenon to study how the universe changes or evolves over time. However, the further away the galaxy is, or the earlier in the universe's history we're seeing it, the fainter it becomes. To observe galaxies across the universe's history, and in particular the earliest galaxies, we need to turn to Hubble and its unique capabilities, combined with long observations. Beginning in 1994, Hubble observed one small patch of sky continuously for more than 140 hours, almost six days, producing its first deep field. The patch of sky chosen is near the constellation of Ursa Major, also known as the Plough or Big Dipper. This was chosen because there were no nearby bright objects in the sky and very little interstellar dust, which would otherwise absorb or block the light from distant objects. The resulting image covered only one twenty-five millionth of the sky, but contains thousands of galaxies stretching across the universe's history. Each of these galaxies contains billions of individual stars and planets. Hubble has subsequently carried out this experiment several times, perhaps most notably with the Ultra Deep Field. Beginning in 2003, the Ultra Deep Field project observed a new patch of sky to even greater depth in the Deep Field. With the installation of Hubble's most advanced camera, Wide Field Camera 3, as part of the final service submission to Hubble in 2009, new data was added, encompassing the ultraviolet and near infrared. In total, Hubble's observed the ultra deep field continuously for more than 300 hours. That's 12 and a half days. During the observations, Hubble not only looked at visible light, but also in the infrared and ultraviolet. The size of the ultra deep field is only around 100th of the full moon. To observe the whole sky to the same sensitivity, Hubble would need to observe continuously for a million years. The ultra deep field contains thousands of galaxies stretching back at more than 13 billion years more than 90% of the universe's history. Hubble's deep fields allow astronomers to explore how galaxies have grown and changed over time. Comparing these observations to computer simulations like these helps us understand the processes involved, like star formation and the growth of supermassive black holes. One of Hubble's particular focuses has been on discovering examples of the very first galaxies to form. These played an important role in the history of our universe. They brought an end to the cosmological dark ages, a period of the universe's history when there were no sources of light. Their intense radiation reionized the universe's hydrogen. And through supernova explosions, they enriched the universe with heavy elements like carbon and oxygen. Thanks to projects like the Richard Field, we've now found examples of galaxies when the universe was only a few hundred million years old. However, examples of the very first galaxies have remained elusive. This is due to Hubble's limitations. Hubble is a relatively small telescope with a mirror only 2.5 meters in diameter. This makes it very difficult to observe very faint objects like the first galaxies. And while Hubble can observe across the visible spectrum, it can only observe a small portion of the infrared light beyond the red end of the spectrum. This is important because the light from the most distant objects is shifted into the infrared by the expansion of the universe. The very first galaxies are effectively then invisible to Hubble. Overcoming Hubble's limitations is a new observatory, the James Webb Space Telescope, or Webb. This is expected to launch later this year. Webb is a project led by NASA, but with contributions from both the European and Canadian space agencies. And like Hubble, Webb will be used by thousands of astronomers across the world. Webb has a mirror five times larger than Hubble's, providing the sensitivity to detect faint objects like the first galaxies. Crucially, though, Webb is also optimized to study the universe in the infrared. This is achieved by its mirror's unique gold coating, its set of state-of-the-art instrumentation, including a camera developed here in the UK, and its location well beyond the orbit of the moon. Like Hubble, Webb will be used to answer a number of questions across astronomy. Early on in its mission, it will embark on a new set of deep fields, allowing us to uncover the first stars and galaxies to form in the universe.
Hubble has transformed our understanding of the universe, particularly the distant universe, where it's given us our first glimpse of the first stars, galaxies, and black holes. Continuing Hubble's legacy is the upcoming web telescope launching next year. Thank you for listening.